know it's a little early, but let's talk about the draft. No. Because... Go ahead. <laughs> Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. If he was six foot five, 260 pounds, I'd be really scared right now because he's got that look in his face. Like he could just Tasmanian devil. So you woke my ass up at seven o'clock in the morning to do this. Let's do it. All right, Bills trade up. They're trading with Tampa. Yeah, I've, I've heard that, right? So that's- Yeah, because I said it. Yeah, I know. Jerk. I've heard that from you. <laughs> yeah. um, Arians yeah. won't trade out though. In Tampa, you but Arians doesn't really value rookie players. It's I interesting mean, too because the mock draft of Mel Kiper, 1.0. All right, the fact that you have to start, you're salty earlier. I'm gonna be salty now. The fact that you have to number your mock drafts just to get it's it's all whatever ratings and all this other is stuff. Is Mel Kiper sponsored by Floby? Remember that vacuum that would suck and cut your hair? Probably. I think you still get those, actually. Dude, do you just, like, in the off time, do you just go into the store that says, as seen on TV, and just, <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm going to mention that next week. <laughs> like, you got to bet with somebody, I don't know. <laughs> Kuiper's job is to continually make his next thing important. That's his whole job. Like, he's just he just perpetually creates things that make him important. That's his, that's his whole reason for being. You said it six years ago. Mel Kuyper is the NFL version of a weather. Man. Absolutely. Yep. Hi. Yeah. I have 17 mock drafts, and I have this team taking four quarterbacks. Well, right. then you didn't really call it, Mel. You know, Sorry. It, but that's the thing. If you can take 17 colors of paint and then just randomly splatter it at the wall with a sponge, eventually the whole wall is going to be covered. Right, eventually the whole wall is going to be painted. Keep your feathers up your butt does not make you a chicken. What? You ever heard that one? It's in Fight Club. We don't talk about Fight Club. First rule of Fight Club is we don't talk about Fight Club. All right, trading up. I think it's going to be more than likely Tampa just because of an established relationship. But they could trade number six. Yep. Okay. They could trade number three with Oakland. Mm -hmm. right. Well, let's not forget, How? Oakland's got three picks. Well, no, that's what I'm saying, though, is the fact that anything that the Bills could offer some other team, they have cap room. They could take cap off of your hands, mm -hmm. or they could, uh, you know, they're offering you a higher pick. Well, you know what? Oakland has three picks, and they have cap room. Right. That's close. To, they have $70 million. So anything the Bills could offer them would have to be a player, Jerry Hughes, perhaps. Because he needs that an edge rusher. Lot. That would solve a lot of their problems. But it he's would. only got one year left on his deal, so... But they have $70 million to extend him if they want to. Shaq Lawson makes more sense to deal to Oakland. He does. But my point is this. If if that scenario would, would manifest, it would have to be a player for them to get up to three. Mm -hmm. Okay? If they wanted to get up to two for the 49ers, I don't know of any pre-established relationship that goes on right there. The 49ers seem hell-bent on, on solidifying their defense because mm -hmm. they lost... Uh, uh, Foster, mm -hmm. so they're gonna have to try to do something to solidify that defensive line has been solid for a few years now. That's what they're gonna have to do. They're not going to one. No. They're not going to Arizona. Okay, no. Arizona earned that pick. Sure did. So they're gonna keep that pick unless the only team that could offer anything close to what Arizona needs would be Oakland. Okay? Give them. They give yeah. them the third and maybe another one of their first and maybe like a second next year. Yeah. Because they need bodies and they need bodies bad. All right. You don't know what Clingsbury is going to do there coming over from college. So it's unpredictable what that first pick is going to be. All right. Uh, fifth is the Giants. Uh, fifth is the Tampa. Sixth is the Giants. Fourth is the Jets, I think. No, Jets are not, not going. That's Jets not are going happening. defense, yeah. and you're not training a guy inside the division. You're not giving a, a team inside the division some guy you're gonna have to play yeah, twice you're a not, year. You're not doing All that. right, That's all eighth. Why? At, at that why point, go why? one? Why? Why go one spot? So as far as that goes, 
That's why I deem either Tampa or the Giants as the more likely trade partner for the Bills because they have an established relationship and they can't really offer a lot to the other yeah. teams that are up there. And you got a division rival up there. So and, they're not going to trade up. You know, I'm with you on that because when you look at what the Bills could do, right, trading is absolutely a possibility given what we've seen the last couple of years. But to me, it is more likely that if they trade, they trade twice. They trade down from nine into the teens somewhere. You don't. You, I don't think they're going to want to drop too far if they do drop, right? And then I really feel like if they keep that pick, they could again look at, you know, look at what they have and try and get back up to twenty eight. Because Oakland might get back that, in. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because at Oakland, if the Bills trade them the ninth pick in the second round, oh, that's not a far drop for Oakland. That's twelve picks. Oakland. Oak, no, not, that's not a, no. that's not a far drop for them, but the Bills don't exactly have the war chest of draft picks that they had last year. And so brought this up on another video. They have one first rounder, one second rounder, and that's really where your trade your trade capital comes in to start trading around in the first round. So the only way to generate that trade capital is either to start trading away players again, which they're re I don't think they're going to be able to do, um, or you take your one high pick in the first round and you drop it back. And then now you've got some capital because now you got a, probably an extra second. You get now you got some stuff to work with. Yeah, depending, if you're going to get back up. Into depending the how far you set, like here's so your scenario is they won't. We're in agreement. They won't trade up. I, I or un, very unlikely to trade up unless yeah. unless there's a player on the board that they absolutely have to have. Mm -hmm. Last year there were two that they yeah. absolutely had to have. Yep. Now you're saying if they if they trade with let's say any Cleveland. Seven at seventeen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because I was gonna go eleven with Cincinnati. Cincinnati does make sense. I love that. I love that going to Cincinnati. So, yeah. but you get more capital. All right. So let's say this. Let's say you get a second and next year's third. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you trade your first. You go from nine to seventeen, and you pick up an extra second. Now you got two second round picks to offer Oakland to come back up in. Right. Exactly. Okay. And, All right. And I'm the drop from that. twenty-eight to nine isn't far because you're not giving up your second round pick to do anything. No. No. And you still so, have... And you and, end and up you, with two first-round picks. And you, because, again, you're packaging both second-round picks. So what if you don't have a second-round pick? You got two first-round picks. What do you got? And a third. You still yeah. get to keep your third. Right. And you still have your third-round pick. But that's what I mean. You're just trading up 12 spots to get into to get back into the first round. And you're not going to have to give up a ton of capital. Going to 11, swapping from 9 to 11... we we'll only get not, you a third-rounder. Exactly. It's not a lot. All right. Depends, though. That all depends. We always talk about this, but we always have to have that disclaimer. It depends on what trades happen prior to nine. That's true. Because that'll set the bar for that's the right. entire you draft. Can't, you can't depend on generating capital in the draft. I think that's a fair point because you never know what these trades are Was it 2015 be. where the Dolphins messed everyone up? Yeah. Because they traded out of the first they, they had the first one of the first 10 picks they traded out of that and they only got like a first and a fourth yeah they got some awful and, awful and it set the tone for the you know we talk about free agency the first guys that get signed set the bar right. of where it's going to be right um and, it, and that's where it helps agents negotiate where guys have to be yeah the draft itself that's why you think about it this this past year the jets they threw everything at the colts mm-hmm or to get up. Yep. The day draft hit, draft day hit, none of that mattered. No, none didn't. of that. None of that mattered. It didn't because draft day is a totally different animal. That didn't. That trade did not set the precedent for what the value of that pick was going to be. No, it didn't. It should have, but it didn't. Well, logic would say that it should, right? But this yeah, is, it didn't. That's why I love the draft. It's so unpredictable. It's so it's so oh, yeah. sweet to look at and analyzing certain things that could happen. Now, we're just saying that that's a possibility. I mean, you, you think the Bills would ask for, hey, we're going from nine. We're almost going twice as far back. You're coming twice as far up. We need a second in next year's third. Mm -hmm. That's reasonable. Yeah. We're not asking for a first next year. No. That's When you go from the, the the top ten to the 20s, that's when you ask for a next year's first. Right. Hence the Bills. They went from 10 to 27 mm -hmm. with the Chiefs. They got next year's first. Reasonable. That's yeah. where that comes from. So... As far as trading back, I don't see them initially going further than 17. Right. I see them going as f the start, the 11th with the Bengals, and uh, Panthers a possibility at 16. Mm -hmm. Could happen. 
Well, and I think it's important to call out at this juncture, right? So the, you just mentioned the Bills got that extra first with Kansas City when they jump back to 27. The reason that you get that next year's first is because most teams only have between 15 to maybe 20 players graded as first round picks. That's a great point. So once you get down to 27, it is a possibility that none of those first round players are on the board anymore. So when you see teams start trading back up into the first, it's because they got one guy left on their board that they have as a first round pick and they got to get him. Yeah. Because he's not going to be there. Yeah. You know, and that's and that's what happens in the in the back end of the first round is teams start trying to get back in to get the one guy that's still on their board. Um because after that, you're not you're looking at you're looking at starters in the second round, but there's a definitive tier between guaranteed will start or probably could start. That's the first round of the second yeah, round. Yeah, yeah. That's why, as much as I like the movie, I hated some of the parts about draft day. Mm -hmm. Because there's no way you're getting all your picks back. I'm oh, sorry. God, no. You're done. No. Stick a fork in him, he's done. But the very poignant thing that was very interesting was the GM... Uh, or uh, I can't remember his name. Bull Durham. No, no. <laughs> Chai Chai McBride. Yes. He said to him, he says, "Oh, and you get the quarterback Messiah you want for seven million dollars less." And his eyes perked up. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was awesome that they brought that into the movie. Yeah. Oh, draft position and salary. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, it's it's absolutely a part $7 of seven million dollars solves our cap problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like. Yeah, they take that into account. They do. They do. It has to play a part. 100% has to. Awesome. What do you think the Bills are going to do? Honestly, do you think they're going to stay? They stay, I'm fine. They stay, I'm fine. Because they'll get a starter. Do they need one starter? No. They need multiple starters. Okay. Yeah. That's why uh, I'm all right with, with trading back and then back in at 28. It's like asking me... It's like asking me how I would like... How much I would like a sequel to a movie... Mm -hmm. But the first one didn't come out yet. I don't know if I'm going to like where they stay if their <coughs> free agent moves are... Because it's a month. I'm not, I'm not expecting much in free agent. It's a I'm month really before. Yeah. So let's say if they fill... Let's say they have 10 spots to fill, realistically. They have 10 needs. If they fill eight of those, you want to stay at nine? Fine. If you fill five of those, you got to move. You got to move somewhere. You yeah. got to pick up some more bodies. Somewhere. Yeah, but that's the problem, though, is every GM in the NFL will know the Bills are handcuffed to having to move. So you're not going to get the value that you want when you try and move those draft picks. Well, it, no, no, but they, they, they knew it last year. They yeah. knew the Bills needed a quarterback. Yeah. And they knew that well. And they weren't taken to the cleaners. No. So the Bills loaded up on second and third round picks, which what they, they gave away all of them. Do you think that speaks to what the teams thought of Allen? Because you know they're moving up for Allen. I mean, they, uh, every team knew. I mean, do you think? Do you think those teams looked at it and said, "Yeah, we don't mind giving Allen to the Bills for this"? I don't think they focused on that. Because Bills had two trades on the table. I don't think they focused on that. They pro that could have been a possibility. I think I think teams were so focused on what they were receiving from mm -hmm. the Bills that they didn't care. Okay. Okay. So let's say you were the Ravens, mm -hmm. all right, uh, or you were Tampa. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, the compensation we're getting is pretty sweet, because Tampa was able to was able to flip those picks that they got yeah. from the Bills to somebody else, mm -hmm. and then get other bodies. Because so they're only concerned with what they're what are we getting? Mm -hmm. All right, our cap numbers are this. Our, our we have this many guys under contract. We got to re renegotiate this. We made this these moves in free agency. I, I like this trade for us, not what we're giving them. I like it's for us. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. I don't think they care about who the Bills were going to draft because you never talk about that. You never mm -hmm. say, okay, they're going up for a quarterback because there were still three names on the board when Allen was drafted because he was the third quarterback taken. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was Mayfield, Darnold, then him. Allen. <coughs> then Rosen and Jackson. Right. <coughs> Being said, I think teams concentrate more on what they're receiving in compensation rather than what they're giving up. 